Look at these futuristic building designs, cities blanketed with lush green skyscrapers. It seems like a sustainable solution, a beautiful blend of nature and urban life. But behind the gorgeous visuals lies a harsh reality. Are these tree scrapers truly green, or are they a cleverly disguised form of greenwashing? Projects like the Bosco Verticale in Milan, Italy, exemplify the trends taking root. This pair of residential towers boasts nearly 1,000 trees, 5,000 shrubs, and 10,000 smaller plants. But here's the catch. This ambitious vision came with a hefty price tag. Construction costs were reportedly 5% higher than a conventional building, largely due to the extra structural support needed to handle the weight of all that greenery. That translates to an estimated $4.25 million premium for the trees alone. And the costs don't end there. Is the focus on appearances overshadowing the true ecological cost of these buildings? And if it's such a good idea, why doesn't every building look like this? In a world obsessed with eye-catching visuals, architects are constantly pushing the boundaries of design. From online competitions to sleek renderings, we're inundated with images of impossibly green skyscrapers. Towering structures draped in lush foliage, promising a harmonious blend of nature and urban life. It's a captivating vision, but let's peel back the leaves and take a closer look. Can these ambitious designs truly deliver on their promise of sustainability, or are they simply a deceptive form of greenwashing? The truth is, turning these fantastical images into real-world structures presents immense engineering challenges. Think about it. These aren't just a few potted plants on a balcony. Each tree incorporated into a skyscraper requires a substantial root system, vast amounts of soil, and meticulous engineering to ensure structural integrity. These elements add enormous weight and complexity to the building, pushing the limits of conventional construction. The complexities don't end there. Specialized irrigation systems are needed to keep the plants alive, raising concerns about water usage in urban settings. Plus, someone has to care for these vertical forests, trimming, replanting, dealing with pests, and cleaning up the inevitable debris. This requires specialized skills and a constant influx of resources. Beyond purely structural concerns, building green skyscrapers fundamentally alters the way these buildings interact with their surroundings. Trees naturally block sunlight. That's kind of their thing. This means that the units behind the greenery will experience drastically reduced natural light in a building completely covered in dense vegetation. The result? Increased reliance on artificial lighting negates some of the energy-saving benefits these designs promise. Let's dive deeper into these green skyscrapers' engineering and construction complexities. Imagine trying to grow a substantial tree in a flower pot. Now scale that up to hundreds of trees on a skyscraper dozens of stories tall. The planters needed to accommodate root systems and provide adequate soil are massive and weigh tons, even before they're filled with soil and a fully grown tree. This puts an enormous strain on the building structure, requiring extensive reinforcement that pushes up construction costs and increases the carbon footprint. Engineers face the daunting task of reinforcing the entire skyscraper to withstand this additional load. A typical balcony might be designed to hold 40 to 100 pounds per square foot. Now imagine adding a multi-ton tree island on every floor. But the engineering challenges don't end there. Even the simplest rooftop garden requires layers of specialized materials, growing medium, filter fabric, drainage systems, insulation, and waterproof membranes. These complexities are magnified tenfold when covering an entire skyscraper in vegetation. It's easy to see why architects might gravitate towards simpler, extensive green roofs with mosses and succulents rather than the lush, intensive gardens with trees and shrubs seen in the dazzling renderings. Extensive green roofs, while less visually striking, have lower weight requirements and easier maintenance. The wind engineering challenges are also considerable. Tall buildings already have to withstand powerful forces. Plating the sides with trees adds another layer of complexity. 
The foliage disrupts airflow, potentially creating unpredictable and dangerous gusts for pedestrians below. This forces engineers to overcompensate in the structural design, further increasing the use of materials like concrete and steel. The irrigation systems required to sustain these hanging gardens are equally daunting. Imagine the intricate network of pipes, pumps, and sensors needed to deliver water to hundreds of plants across dozens of floors. This system requires meticulous design, constant monitoring, and significant energy input to operate. Leakage becomes a nightmare scenario, potentially compromising the structural integrity of the building. Speaking of nightmares, let's talk about maintenance. Think about a team of arborists scaling a skyscraper to prune, fertilize, and diagnose issues in these high-rise trees. It's a specialized, risky, and expensive endeavor. Beyond the trees, building facades require regular cleaning and upkeep, work that becomes exceptionally challenging when covered in vegetation. This leads us to the question of longevity. How long can a green skyscraper realistically maintain its lush appearance? Trees on rooftops have a higher mortality rate than those at ground level. Exposure to extreme conditions, confined root systems, and the challenges of maintenance all work against these elevated ecosystems. What happens when these trees die and need to be replaced? Will the allure fade as the facade becomes patchy and neglected? Let's be honest, these opulent finishes may look stunning, but their environmental impact is anything but pretty. Take those exotic woods, for example. They likely traveled thousands of miles from far-off rainforests, leaving a trail of carbon emissions in their wake. Processing materials like stone releases greenhouse gases and consumes vast amounts of energy. Even glass, a seemingly innocuous material, has a hefty carbon footprint due to the energy-intensive manufacturing process. Here's the kicker. Even before a single tree is planted, the building structure itself, all that concrete and steel, has already racked up a substantial environmental debt. The irony is that the more luxurious and visually striking a green skyscraper aims to be, the greater the likelihood that it's a sustainability offender in disguise. The focus on operational efficiency, think solar panels and smart thermostats, often obscures the true environmental cost of these projects. The greenest building, after all, is the one that doesn't need to be built in the first place. Furthermore, this trees on a skyscraper approach raises a fundamental question about the role of green spaces in our city. Are these isolated, high-rise gardens the best use of resources? Wouldn't those funds be better spent restoring existing forests or creating accessible green spaces at ground level where communities can benefit directly? Think about those controversial plans to wrap Central Park in a giant glass wall. Critics argued that it would create a barrier, cutting people off from the real thing. Now imagine this same sense of disconnect applied to green skyscrapers. Sure, they might look impressive from afar, but by hoisting trees high above the street, they become more like a distant spectacle than a truly accessible part of the urban experience. The Bosco Verticale, that iconic Milan skyscraper wrapped in trees, offers a sobering reality check. While undeniably striking, this project came with a hefty price tag. Construction costs were reportedly 5% higher than a conventional building, an estimated $4.25 million premium for the greenery alone. And the costs don't stop there. Specialized maintenance for skyscraper trees, potential structural issues as the trees mature, and the limited ecological value compared to a ground-level forest all raise red flags. Let's put those millions into perspective. That same $4.25 million could restore a staggering 2,125 acres, 860 hectares of natural forest. That's potentially 860 times more green space than the Bosco Verticale. A restored forest provides invaluable benefits far beyond the visual appeal of a few trees on a skyscraper. Cleaner air and water, habitat for countless species, and natural resilience that requires minimal ongoing upkeep. Let's also consider the lifespan of these skyscraper trees. Even with the most optimistic estimates, say 20 years, that means a major overhaul of the building's green facade every couple of decades. 
Compare that to a self-sustaining forest that thrives for generations. So here's the big question. Imagine if all that effort and investment were poured into restoring existing forests, creating vibrant new parks, and transforming our cities into havens of accessible nature. Wouldn't that have a far greater impact on both people and the planet? Let's keep the conversation going. Do you agree or do you see potential in green skyscrapers? Share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications.